Watch this startlingly accurate prophecy about the assassination attempt against former President Donald Trump recorded March 14th of this year. America all throughout and I saw Trump rising up and then I saw an attempt on his life. Uh, that the, this bullet flew by his ear and it came so close to his head that it busted his drum eardrum and I saw um, he was he fell to his knees during this time frame is this cessationist about to have to eat some charismatic crow we'll see Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that this finds you and your family doing well today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. That was Prophet Brandon Biggs, and Brandon has his own YouTube channel where he regales all of us with his prophetic words from the Lord. God talks to Brandon a lot. And uh, we are going to return to Brandon and that specific prophecy because it is, quite honestly, I mean, it's pretty pretty startling, is it not? Um, unlike most of the prophecies that we hear from these charismatic prophets are very general and stuff like that. That's um, like, wow, well, that's uh, what's going on here? So we will return to him. But uh, first, I want to look at a couple of other prophets. And uh, because there are some other prophets out there trying to get in on the Trump assassination attempt prophetic bandwagon, one of whom is Chris Reed. Let's take a look at him real quickly. Chris Reed is the head of Morningstar Ministries. He took over from Rick Joyner, kind of took the helm from Rick Joyner over Morningstar Ministries. And uh, Chris Reed, I've done one video on Chris Reed before. He is a, a prolific false prophet. Many of his prophecies have been proven to be false already. I did one video on him uh, some months ago. Put a link for you down below in the description if you'd like to watch it. But uh, Chris, reads, <laughs> Chris Reed says that the Apostle John is still alive in a cave in Turkey. And so I did a video on that. Uh, link down below if you'd like to watch that. But, but uh, watch, this, um, watch this prophecy from Chris Reed. And this was, uh, at least it was posted on March the 10th. 2024, just a few days before Brandon did his prophecy. But uh, watch this from Chris Reed, what he has to say about a possible assassination attempt on Donald Trump. But I've seen a vision over and over of former President Trump near a car getting in or out and someone trying to take him out an assassination attempt and I want you to agree with me that that would be canceled the Lord shows us these things so that we can come into agreement to stop these things we don't want harm to come to anyone but I want you to take that serious and uh, I think it's really really important Wow so just a few days before Brandon Biggs made his prophecy about Trump Chris Reed also prophesied that there would be an assassination attempt against former President Donald Trump. Now, Chris Reed does not have a very good prophetic track record. He's made a number of proven false prophecies. And unfortunately for him and all the other prophets, the Bible is very clear. Uh, one false prophecy and you are a false prophet. But today's prophets are not ones to let the Bible get in the way of their theology. So full steam ahead for them. So Chris Reed um, made this prophecy. So was he right? Did, did he, um, you know, kind of like a broken clock being right twice a day, did he get this prophecy right? Is this a true prophetic word? Well, uh, not so much, dear ones, because we're not exactly in uncharted territory as it relates to there being assassinations and assassination attempts against presidents or presidential candidates here in the United States of America. Now, just a quick rundown here. Abraham Lincoln, of course, was assassinated in 1865. Then James Garfield, 1881, was also assassinated just six months after he took office. President William McKinley was shot on September the 6th, 1901, and then died from an infection of that wound just about a week or so later on September the 14th. Franklin D. Roosevelt was shot at in 1933. He was not injured, 
but Anton Cermak, the mayor of Chicago at the time, was killed in this assassination attempt. Harry Truman was staying at the Blair House, which is right across from the White House, back in the year 1950, and two gunmen broke into the house, and they started opening fire. Truman was not injured, but a White House police officer was killed in that assassination attempt. JFK, of course, uh, fatally shot in the head, infamously so, in 1963. This was all caught on tape, of course, very, very well known. And then, uh, not long after that, uh, Gerald Ford, President Gerald Ford, actually faced two assassination attempts, but he was not hurt in either of those. And then Ronald Reagan, he was shot and uh, thankfully did not die, of course. And then George W. Bush in 2005 in Tbilisi, he, uh, there was an assassination attempt against him when a man threw a hand grenade at him, but uh, apparently it was a dud, did not go off. So uh, these were assassination attempts against sitting presidents of the United States, and there are also a couple of attempts at just presidential candidates. Theodore Roosevelt in 1912 as a candidate, uh, there was an assassination attempt against him, and uh, Robert F. Kennedy in 1968. He was also a candidate for President of the United States, and he was assassinated, was shot, and killed. Then in 1972, George Wallace, a Democratic nominee for the president, or presidential candidate rather, he was shot, left him paralyzed from the waist down. And then, of course, yesterday, as of this recording, we had the attempt on former President Donald Trump. And so that makes 13. 13 either presidents or presidential candidates who were assassinated or there were attempts, assassination attempts, on them. So unfortunately, dear friends, this is not an infrequent occurrence. It does happen. And that is to say nothing of all of the attempts that were smoked out by the Secret Service or FBI or whatever before they ever got off the ground. So I have no doubt there are many, many more attempts that just never, never got off the ground, never went anywhere. So uh, prophesying that there's going to be an assassination attempt against a president or presidential candidate, you're not exactly going out on a limb here, especially when you're dealing with someone like Donald Trump, who is so hated by um, so many people in this country and all of the powers that be, particularly when you think about, and I'm not going to get too political here, but but the threat that he poses to uh, many of the powers that be, they want him dead. Uh, and, and friends, the, there's a reason the Secret Service exists, right? The Secret Service exists to protect uh, the lives of presidents, to, to protect them from assassination attempts, because as we've just seen, uh, they happen pretty regularly. Uh, so <laughs> prophesying that there's going to be an assassination attempt against someone like Donald Trump, well, that's about like prophesying that there's going to be an earthquake somewhere in the state of California. Um, it's probably going to happen. It is going to happen. So uh, this, is no, this is no fulfilled prophecy here. In fact, show you further evidence that it's not. I don't know if you caught it, but listen to this again from Chris Reed. An assassination attempt, and I want you to agree with me that that would be canceled. The Lord shows us these things so that we can come into agreement to stop these things. You see what Chris Reed did there? He says, I want you to come into agreement with me so we can stop these things. So he wins either way, you see. So if, if, if there's not an assassination attempt on President Trump, then uh, it's because we all came into agreement with Chris Reed and we stopped this thing. That's why God gave him the vision, the prophecy, you see, so we could come against it and prevent it from happening. But if so, uh, if it never happens, hey, we came into agreement with Chris Reed and, and we stopped this thing. So, you know, a little pat on our backs there. But uh, if it does happen, hey, this is a pro this is a fulfilled prophecy. Uh, because, you know, we just didn't come to agreement with Chris Reed enough. And, um, you know, sorry for 
President Trump, but there was indeed a, an assassination attempt against his life. And that's it's really our fault, you see, because we just didn't agree enough. So um, and, and now he gets to tout this and, and herald this as one of his, quote unquote, fulfilled prophecies. And he is heralding this from the rooftops. He's putting it on his YouTube channel and social media, one of his fulfilled prophecies. Well, the way he does this is like he wins either way. Either way, uh, he, he wins. And this is by design, dear friends. Look, Chris Reed and people like him, prophets like him, all prophets, really, um, they're, they're con artists. They're wolves. They're, they are hirelings and deceivers. But they're not dumb. They're not stupid people. Um, and so this is by design. He wins either way. Hank Kuhneman has also jumped on the prophetic assassination bandwagon. You might remember Hank Kuhneman was one of the many prophetic voices from 2020 prophesying that Donald Trump would win the election and serve a second consecutive term. Hank Kuhneman went further than some even. Uh, because even after the election was certified for Biden and Biden had taken up residence at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Hank Kuhneman was still prophesying that somehow Biden would be removed and Trump would be installed as the president of the United States and serve that second consecutive term. But uh, we're three and a half years now removed from that. It's pretty obvious that uh, Donald Trump did not serve a second consecutive term. But uh, Hank Kuhneman, uh, if you've ever watched this guy, he heads One Voice Ministries and he pastors, quote unquote, uh, Lord of Hosts Church. He's a frequent guest on Kenneth Copeland's program, uh, YouTube channel, Flashpoint. Some of you may have seen that. Uh, Charlie Kirk is a regular guest on there as well, which is maybe another program for another time. But at any rate, uh, Hank Kuhneman has also gotten on the prophetic bandwagon here. Now, he is touting a prophecy uh, about Donald Trump that he offered back on December the 31st, 2018. And uh, this is recently, they just put this up on their YouTube channel. And I took a screenshot of it here. It's, it's kind of fuzzy, but that's just the quality of their YouTube channel for some reason. But at any rate, you can read it. So this is a prophecy. Now, Kuhneman, if you've, if you've watched him, you know he spends most of his time, the vast majority of his time, speaking in the first person for God, giving prophetic pronouncements directly from God. And uh, he is quoting God as saying the following. There is a bullseye that appears and is spoken of in the very bowels of hell. And the bullseye is upon the northeast of your nation. And so I speak to you now. Listen and do not fear, but pray and watch. For ninety days of summer, extreme summer, unusual summer, many events unfold in the summer and the enemy seeks to wound you. Pray, watch. Isn't that wording a little odd there that God would say, uh, the northeast of your nation. It kind of reminds me of Kim Clement. He's dead now, but he was a prophet that was big deal uh, back in his day, um, 15, 10, 15 plus years ago. And he was heralded as a very accurate prophet. And I remember one of his prophecies, I don't have it here, but, but one of his prophecies, he was speaking in the first person for God and God was talking about the White House and the presidency. And, and he quoted God as saying, in the house that you call white. You know, that's that's how God refers to the White House, the house that you call white. So this is like, you know, the northeast of your nation. God almost talks like Yoda. <laughs> Just really strange. But anyway, he says, uh, so I speak to you now, listen and do not fear, but pray and watch for 90 days of summer. <laughs> so uh, there's going to be 90 days of summer in the year 2018. It's like, wow, and thanks for that. That's that's a good heads up. 90 days of summer in 2018, kind of like the summers of, well, pretty much every other summer. But at any rate, I digress. So 90 days of summer, extreme summer, unusual summer. So it's apparently going to be hot in the summer of 2018. Again, who knew? 
And then he says, many events unfold in the summer. Many events, God would say many events unfold in the summer. Don't many events unfold every single day? I mean, many events have already unfolded for me today. I mean, I got up, I brushed my teeth, I got dressed, combed my hair, went to church, um, read scripture, prayed, listened to preaching, you know, and, and all of that was before noon. So yes, I guess I guess many events did indeed unfold in the summer of 2018, just kind of like, I don't know, many events unfold every single day. You see, dear friends, this is, this is, this is gobbledygook. This is nonsense. This is a, this is, this is prophecy in the form of a Kamala Harris word salad. That's all it is. These generalities, they say a bunch of words, but they don't really mean anything and they don't say anything. So at any rate, so this was the word of the Lord for, uh, the nation given to by God through Hank Kuhneman on December the 31st, 2018. So let's look at what God had to say to Hank Kuhneman on December the 31st, 2019 for the then upcoming year of 2020. Now, he's, he said a lot, not the least of which that Trump would win, but we've already talked about that. So uh, this is something else that God told Hank Kuhneman. Through this that I have chosen in this man, referring to Trump, this nation will win and win and win. And I told you, okay, I'm gonna, I got to pause right there. So God said, uh, speaking of Trump, uh, that this nation will win and win and win. Um, yeah, Trump's not in the White House, is he? And I don't think that this nation has been winning and winning and winning in the last almost four years. Uh, in fact, we've been on a pretty bad losing streak. If you haven't noticed, things have not been going well for the last four years. But that win and win and win, that's something that Donald Trump says. He's hes known for saying, you know, we're going to win so much, you're going to get sick of winning, that kind of stuff. Win, win, win. You know, We will have so much winning if I get elected that you may get bored with winning. <laughs> Believe me, I agree. You'll never get bored with winning. We never get bored. So God apparently is aping the verbiage and mannerisms of Donald Trump. But then this is my favorite part. This is God continues. <laughs> win and win and win. And I told you that I added an I to his name, Trump. That is, that it is triumph. Uh, now, I'm not a smart man, but I think if you... <laughs> If you add an I to the name Trump, you don't get the word triumph. To get the word triumph, you would have to not only add an I, but also have to add an H. So I guess God is a bad speller. Maybe he should try hooked on phonics. This is just absurd, dear friends. But this is the caliber of today's so-called prophets. And he's one of the most well-known of the charismatic prophets, one of the biggest platforms. What a joke. Now, those prophecies were from 2018 and 2019, but Hank Kuhneman did offer a much more recent prophecy about um, a danger to Donald Trump. Now, I want to show you a quick clip of this. Now, you're going to see at the top of the screen, you're going to see Hank Kuhneman, July 14th, 2024. That is because uh, they aired that uh, today, actually, as I'm recording this, Sunday, July 14th. But uh, they're playing a clip at his church from a statement, a prophetic statement that he made June 27th. You see the date circled there. So this clip was actually, he actually made this statement June 27th, but they're replay, they replayed it today to uh, as, as evidence of a fulfilled prophecy from Hank Kuhneman about the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Let's watch. That's where the American people are at. We, it's time to build again, and it's time to fight for our children. It's time to fight for our country. And I think that's what you're going to see uh, that is going to shift things in an incredible momentum 
from this moment forward. And I think they're going to try something beside time. I think they're going to try to take it a step deeper. I think we need to be praying for President Trump's safety. I think we need to be praying over uh, this country regarding just, you know, other things that they would desire to do to stall things, delay things, create chaos, create diversions, um, because they know they can't win. So Hank Kuhneman is heralding this as one of his fulfilled prophecies. Is this a fulfilled prophecy? No, it's a fulfilled, educated guess, and it's not even a profound, educated guess at that. As I said, there are millions of people in this country that hate Donald Trump, tens of millions of people that hate him, and uh, they have thrown everything but the kitchen sink at Donald Trump, and yet he keeps going. And uh, right now, if the polls are right, it looks like he very well may be uh, the next president of the United States. Uh, time will tell. But at any rate, this is not a fulfilled prophecy. This is just, it's common sense. In fact, I want to show you this. This is a quote from Tucker Carlson. Now, from what I've seen of Tucker Carlson, he is not regenerate. Uh, he has an interest in God in kind of a general sense, but uh, maybe some kind of an interest in scripture, but that does not a Christian make. Uh, but he said this, this is a quote from him last year in 2023. He says, if you begin with criticism, then you go to protest, then you go to impeachment. Now you go to indictment and none of them work. What's next? Graph it out, man. We're speeding towards assassination, obviously. They have decided, permanent Washington, both parties have decided, that there's something about Trump that's so threatening to them, they just can't have him. Does this make Tucker Carlson a prophet? No, it makes him someone who offered an educated guess and quite reasonable one, and that's what we're seeing. So these are not, these are not fulfilled prophecies, not at all. Now, all of you are probably wondering, well, what about the guy who prophesied about a bullet in Trump's ear and all that? So let's now turn our attention to Brandon Biggs. And I want to play this clip for you again. America all throughout. And I saw Trump rising up and then I saw an attempt on his life. Uh, that w the, this bullet flew by his ear and it came so close to his head that it busted his drum eardrum. And I saw um, he was he fell to his knees during this time frame, and he started worshiping the Lord. He got radically born again during this time frame. I'm talking. People say he's saved now, but he becomes really on fire for Jesus. For what I saw coming. So this is the clip that is causing such buzz in the charismatic and the evangelical world right now, because it does appear to be so close and so specific to what actually happened. Um, Sean Foyt of Bethel Music, at least formerly Bethel Music, he is promoting this. Charisma Magazine, True to Form, is promoting this. Anytime a prophecy seems to might have been at least tangentially, hopefully, if you look at it from the right angle and you hold your mouth just right, might have been fulfilled, boy, they are all over that stuff like white on rice. Uh, they are so eager to promote this kind of stuff because, well, quite honestly, it, their, their desperation uh, to have some fulfilled prophecies uh, shows you the complete dearth of truly fulfilled prophecies that they have. And by dearth, I mean zero. They literally have none. So when one comes kind of, sort of close, as I said, they're all over that like white on rice. And that's exactly what is happening here. Big's prophecy is not a true prophecy. It was not fulfilled prophecy for a few reasons. One, like Chris Reed's prophecy, this is, even though it seems specific, this too is just a general prophecy because he said that someone is going to try to uh, assassinate Trump uh, with a, a bullet to the head. Well, as disturbing as the whole thing is, if you're if you're wanting to kill a president or a presidential candidate, you're not going to be able to walk up to him and stab him with a knife because he's got too much protection. You're going to have to kill him from a distance. So how do you do that? Well, your only option is a gun. Um, crossbow's not going to do it, so you're going to have to have a gun. 
And so if you're trying to, and you're going to have to be some distance away. So if you're some distance away trying to shoot a man, uh, the most obvious target is his head. That's the, the highest percentage of a kill shot is to the head. Again, this is disturbing stuff to talk about, but nonetheless, that's what it is. That's what Lee Harvey Oswald did with JFK back in 1963, shot him in the head. So that's a very high percentage kill shot. You're not likely, I mean, if the bullet makes contact with your head, uh, in all likelihood, it's going to kill you. So this too is just kind of a generalized, this is just an educated guess. That's all in the world it is. Uh, you've heard it said that a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, in this case, you can't even say it was right because here's the next reason that his prophecy is not a true false, not a true prophecy because it is in fact a false prophecy because Big said that the bullet would come close to his head, close to his ear, so close that it would burst his eardrum. That's not what happened. Dear friends, the bullet didn't just zip past his head close, but not making contact. It actually did make contact with President Trump. It hit his ear. So the bullet did make contact. It didn't just go by closely. It made contact with his flesh. So he got that wrong. And then when he said it would burst his eardrum, well, that didn't happen either. So God did not give him this vision. This is not a true prophetic vision. If God were truly giving him a, a real prophetic vision, then it would have been much more specific about the date, about exactly what would happen. Um, he was wrong on these things. So this is, even though it kind of seems to come close, still a false prophecy. The bullet did touch his head and it did not burst his eardrum. And other people are talking about, well, well he, Big said that, pro, that Trump would fall to his knees. And we saw, in the, everybody's seen the video, Trump went down to his knees. Well, yes, he did go down to his knees, but he did not come up born again, as Big said. And it's also interesting that Big said that this would happen, uh, quote, during this time frame. So during this time frame that there would be an attempt on Trump's life, he would go down to his knees and worship and get radically born again and and then, quote, get really on fire for Jesus. Well, difference, Trump is not born again. Uh, he did not go down on his knees to worship. He went down, he lowered himself down on his knees for self-protection, of course. Anybody would have done that. Uh, as well. So he went down to protect himself because shots were being fired. And, but then just a few seconds after that, he's back up and pumping his fist and all that and saying, he's, he's pumping his fist and saying, fight, fight. And I admire his courage and all that, but, but coming back up, he wasn't coming back up and worshiping God or praising Jesus and been born again. No, he's telling his, he's telling those, his followers at this rally, to to fight but he's not he didn't come up and start worshiping god and praising god and praising jesus he's not born again donald trump is not a christian and for those of you who think he is no he's not this is a man who on at least two different occasions has said that he has never asked god for forgiveness by definition if you've never asked god for forgiveness then you are not a Christian. So, and please don't take this like I'm downing Trump or something like that. I'm just, I'm just giving you the facts of what Biggs said and what actually happened. Biggs gave a false prophecy. So what you've, what is being touted as this, this incredibly specific prophecy that was fulfilled before our very eyes? No, it's not. It was a false prophecy. It wasn't fulfilled. It was false. And I want us to take a little bit closer look at Mr. Biggs. It almost sounds like a James Bond movie, you know, Mr. Biggs or something. So uh, who is Mr. Biggs? Well, he has a YouTube channel, and his channel is full of what the Lord told him. God told him this. God told him that. God told him all kinds of stuff. So uh, how is Mr. Biggs' prophetic track record? Well, not so good. I want to, down below in the description, there is a link to this article 
from which I will be uh, drawing this information. It's by Protestia, protestia.com, and uh, go there. They've got a lot of good stuff there. So again, link down below in the description. This is where I'm getting. So uh, I am not personally familiar with Brandon Biggs because uh, honestly, I mean, there's just so many false prophets, so little time. I can't get to all of them. So Protestia has done the legwork here. So Mr. Biggs, so amongst other things, Biggs has prophesied that there would be a massive EMP, electromagnetic magnetic pulse attack on the United States from, quote, Oriental people using missiles from the USSR that takes out half of the Midwest. Italy will have a massive volcanic eruption that will cause major devastation. There will soon be another plague that will kill 350 million people. And there will be a major earthquake that results in helicopters having to fly in food for hundreds of cities across America because all the bridges will collapse across the country. Uh, years ago, he falsely prophesied an economic crash would occur in the year 2013. And in this prophecy, he urged people to buy rations and supplies. So many of them, believing he was hearing from God, did so, and they suffered financial hardships as a result. He was uh, kind of forced and compelled to offer an apology to the people that he misled. There was at least one pastor who barred him from ever prophesying in his church again. He also prophesied that silver would go to $100 per ounce about this time, about the time in which we are currently living. Well, silver is nowhere near $100 an ounce. It's at, I just checked, $31 an ounce. So there's another false prophecy. He prophesied that the Iraqi dinar would skyrocket in value, and he urged people to invest in it. And so a lot of people, again, believing he was hearing from God, did so, and they lost their shirts over it. And this clip goes on to say, this very clip goes on to show Biggs prophesying that once Trump takes power, uh, there will be a great economic crash, quote, worse than the Great Depression. And then I saw him winning uh, the election uh, through uh, the Patriots coming out and voting. And then, and then, and then there will be a great economy crash. Yeah. I saw they had a great economy that. plan, a crash, yeah. worse than the, uh, the uh, Great Depression. And the Lord warned me about this. It would be a great dark time. Now, Things have got to be pretty bad, economically speaking, to be worse than the Great Depression, which had a 25% unemployment rate. So uh, uh, things are going to have to tank a lot. But this he's not a prophet. He's just like all the other so-called prophets that offer these generalities. In fact, here's a screenshot of one of his recent videos from just a couple of weeks ago. The Lord showed me an earthquake hitting the West Coast. In other breaking news, the sun rose in the east this morning. I mean, this is kind of the absurd stuff, dear friends. He is just another in the long in the clown car of false prophets that unfortunately is the charismatic movement. He's not a true false. He's not a true prophet. He is a false prophet, and his prophecy did not come true. His prophecy was false, objectively false. All right, dear ones, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped you to understand because I've, I've gotten a few texts from my friends, from my cessationist friends, like, what do we do with this? Well, it's not what it appears. So um, thank you very much. Uh, also down below in the description is a link to the upcoming cessationist conference, October 3rd through 5th at First Baptist Church in Mustang, Oklahoma, suburb of Oklahoma City. And if you want to be equipped how to answer the false theology, false claims of the charismatic movement, uh, this conference is for you. I'm really looking forward to this. I will be speaking at it, as will many other very able and capable preachers and theologians. So we aim to equip you to uh, speak the truth and to understand these things rightly. Thank you very much for watching. Dear ones, until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you all.